Hello, everyone. I am your hardcore host, Rick Head of Hardcore Wrestling Radio. And today we're going to go back to doing movie reviews, which we haven't done in quite some time. You'll be able to find this over at youtube.com slash show and DK Retro. And allow me to introduce the admin of that chat room, and he's also the, the classic wrestling manager, Joseph Knight. Joe, what's up? Nothing much. Yeah, where is that bastard? Oh, wait, that's me. We got a lot to go. I think what we're, we're going to talk about, I believe, is the Star Wars The Force Awakens, correct? That is correct, um, and for those of you who are a fan of the movie, um, it's already coming out to DVD. It should be out sometime in April. Before we get into the uh, you know, the actual review, I've noticed that, Joe. Movies seem to don't stay in the theaters as long as they used to. You know, the, the thing is, it's movies today, It's people are very picky, and I, I kind of read, sat down and looked at both sides of the arguments. I, I went down to a sense of research for this. And I saw that fans of people are just not what they used to be. I, I, maybe it's society, maybe social media, I don't know. But fans just don't stay interested in something long. And, or should I say people? Because already it's like, eh, we're not going to go see that. We saw it once in the movies. I think that's enough. And we'll wait for the DVD and we'll toss it in the closet. You know, I, that's, I guess that's what's going on nowadays. Well, you know what? Let's get on to the actual movie at hand. It is Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. Um, Joe and I have a little bit of uh, mixed uh, opinions on the matter, but let's get over the Three decades after the defeat of the Galactic Empire, a new threat arises called the First Order, which basically is Galactic Empire 2.0. Uh, they attempt to rule the galaxy with only a ragtag of group heroes can stop them. Uh, now, the ragtag heroes are of several people from the original Star Wars series, Han Solo, which is Harrison Ford, and then um, they also have Carrie Fisher in Princess Leia. Now, Luke Skywalker, who's also played by Mark Hamill, is only up in a very small part of the movie. I'm guessing they're going to use him on a much bigger role in the upcoming movie. Basically, the story is that Han and Leia's uh, son, Kylo Ren, had a falling out with a, uh, with a father, or Han, and after some point in time, he decides to join the dark side because he does have the Jedi skills that goes within the genes of the family. And he seems to want to take up the place with Darth Vader um, left off. He wants to be part of that ruling of the galaxy. Joe, I know you weren't really too crazy about this movie. Just tell us why and tell us what you had the problem with. Okay, well, well, let's go back to the, the very beginning. The, this is first the director is J.J. Abrams. And anybody who's, who knows J.J. Abrams, he's a special effects hound. I mean, everybody joked about George Lucas being FX and he's like special effects and the special editions and all that. Well, here's this guy that used and fans purchase or get, or I don't care how you do it, watch Star Trek 2009, the reboot. Watch when the Enterprise goes to warp speed and they show the warp tunnel. It is exactly the same t warp tunnel that they have the Millennium Falcon travel in. That's kind of funny if you look at that. It's a little Easter egg for you fans. Well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, Joe. I mean, I've watched the original series, Star Wars series, um, but even in the drive, and, and I noticed they kind of had the very similar thing that Star Trek had. They had the big lines going out, and then they're driving, th you know, they're flying through that, like, light blue tube, which is hyperspace, of course. I, myself, I understood, can understand why a lot of people were turned off to this movie, because it pretty much was a rehash of the original series, uh, you know, uh, A New Hope. You know, everything just seemed to be on a bigger, bigger scale. You know, uh, they had this Death Star, which is basically like ten times the size of a Death Star. Right. Go ahead. If I can interject real quick. First of all, let's go back to what the, ba the plot of the, the actual story is supposed to be. If anybody follows the Star Wars books, which is no longer canon, and it's a shame, follow the books, uh, Han and Leia had two children. They were j twins. They uh, were Jason and Jaina. In this one, I guess they call him Ray, and, and it was Ben Solo who became Kylo Ren. My problem with the whole movie is, from beginning to end, it was just a complete rehash of episodes 3, 4, and 5, all mashed together. And all they did was r take a whole big planet and made it into the Death Star, Star Killer Base. For fans who, who've played Star Wars um, Forces Unleashed, that's the name of the clone, the character that Darth Vader has, his apprentice. But in this, it, it was just so much a rehash. Everything happened so fast. I'm like, they really didn't give time to 
sit down. And here's another thing that I got really annoyed with. Here's R two D two, who's the seat, who holds the information of where Luke can be, and nobody knows how to turn him on. Okay, well let's plug the little sucker into a power outlet. I bet you he'll turn on. He wasn't. He didn't have any problems in the prequels. He didn't have no problem be, moving around in the four, five, and six. Rick, why? You know, what well, happened? You know, well, for one, I do admit they had to bring in that new droid, and I keep on forgetting. It's like B-22. No, B- BB-8. BB-8. Okay, shows you how much I remember of the, the name of the thing. Shows you how, but I think how the, forgettable that movie is. But go ahead, Rick. <laughs> but I, I, the, re- the main reason why he powered down or he went off because he felt that his – you know, his the duty was done for the droid or whatever. You know, they'd beaten the Empire, and the the galaxy kind of went into, you know, normalcy. So I, a long story to be short, I mean, I think he, if you noticed, he reactivated when he reunited with 3PO, if I'm not mistaken. No, he, he 3PO was with him at the time, and they kept hitting him and, I guess, trying to turn him on. Like, get on, turn on your little junk pile. It, it, Again, the whole movie was, I think, haphazardly done. The, the characters were whiny, like one who played Anakin Skywalker in the prequels, Christian Hayden or something like that. I think that's who he is. Yeah, he was like a whiny teenager, Darth Vader guy. But Kylo Ren? This is like a, t- a little kid throwing a tantrum, destroying everything. You imagine when they show that scene where the two stormtroopers are coming around the corner and all they hear him is, ah, and slashing that machinery. How the hell do they know he ain't slashing the environmental systems? Or ma- imagine he's slashing the, the, the sewer controls and everybody who's using the toilet gets the air, water blown up their ass. <laughs> you know? I don't think that would be in, you know, the next episode or the next uh, movie of uh, Star Wars in Episode 8, which is supposed to come out sometime, I think, in 2017. Don't hold me on that one. Um, Overall, I like the movie, and I think they were just – if this movie itself was doing, you know, character development. You know, they were showing about the feud with Kylo Ren. They brought in uh, this other person, Rey, who has this incredible force – you know, know, powers of the force. She just looks at somebody, and the whole room goes flying, Um, which I found a little bit peculiar. Yeah, you know what? And this is another thing that got me. Now, I can – I'm going to spoil it for everybody. Yes. Ray is Leia's daughter, so the, yes. The, uh, so everybody made that connection. Uh, here's the thing, though. Obviously, Ray and Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, Tampa, Tampa Tantrum Boy, you know, must have been trained with Luke for to know the Force, and she probably just forgot. But I think throughout the series, they should have explained that a lot better. That's why I like episodes four, five, and six, and that's why, to a point, except for the for that one annoying character, me that called Jar Jar Binks. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have a problem. But if you notice throughout Lucas's movies, they take the time to develop the characters, and you see like Luke, who's the farm boy, doesn't know the Force. It's being trained slowly, and then you see where he gets to in that, in Return of the Jedi. The Force Awakens, I think it was kind of a force-fed type movie where, okay, look, he's here, he, she's here, this is what happened, this is the fight, here we go, new, new Death Star, and it was kind of haphazardly done. It's like I would have made the thing stretch out a little bit more, and that piss-poor cameo by I, – I love Mark Hamill. If, if you're a fan of the Batman animated TV series or – the animated movies, he plays the Joker. Mark Hamill's a great actor and a great voice actor. I wish they would have done more with him at the end of well, the movie. Again, I think, you know, like I said, he was just a cameo, a walk-on part, but I think it was just to say, hey, you know what, he's here. He was playing the role of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, where he's, you know, pretty much gone into seclusion and... Because he probably, uh, for one reason or another, we don't know yet, like, according to the movie. So I'm guessing we're going to learn a lot more in the next movie, which I'm going to watch. You know, uh, like it or not, you know, I'm a Star Wars mark, and I know some people didn't like the prequels, and now they don't like the post movies. You know, they only liked Episode Four, Five, and Six. And don't get me wrong, I grew up with Four, Five, and Six. I saw A New Hope as well as Empire Strikes Back 
in a drive-in. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a drive-in before, but it is probably one of the best experiences, especially for a space mo- you know, for a sci-fi movie. Um, we're going to wrap things up here. If I had to give uh, my uh, overall thoughts, I'd have to say it's not bad. I'm looking forward to see more. Um, and I have to give this a four out of five. Joe, your thoughts? Huh, you know what? Again, I'm going to stick to the guns. It was very haphazardly done. It was very pushed quickly. It was just rehashing the whole movies into one movie. Very poor cal- uh, ca- uh, character development. They could have done better. I got to give it a two. Just to, because I got to see the original characters. And Rick, before we sign off, didn't Leia look like she completely drank throughout the whole movie? Uh, she she was rough looking. you know. And I remember Leia from Return of the Jedi when she had that. On. Yeah, and she was like, wow. But now it's like, ooh, you know what? wow. It, it's kind of wonder why, why Han did leave her for a while. <laughs> yeah, because she was in AA, right? Oh, my God. It, you know, even uh, even Chewie would say, I ain't kissing that. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no, no. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, as always, please follow us over at YouTube.com slash HWR Show. And also over at DK Retro. Joe, over to you. What do you got going on? Where can people find you? I'm going to be working on the Super Nintendo version of Castlevania. I'm going to be playing that in a little bit. I'm going to get a little review put down. Castlevania, one of the great games. You can also follow me on Facebook at Facebook.com, Joseph Knight Manager. Or you can even join my group, which is Facebook.com groups, DK Retro. Retro, and it's just game reviews, it's movie reviews, it's TV shows, classic stuff. If you're into the classic stuff, classic music, classic everything, that's where you want to go. If you want to w- learn about wrestling, professional wrestling of any aspect, head, check out HWR. Rick, you can tell them where they can see that. And that's over in our chat room where we were looking for passionate people who could say what they want how they want to say it about wrestling, and that's over in our chat room on the Facebook page under the groups HWI Chat. I am your hardcore host, Rickhead, saying we'll see you when we see you. Me say bye-bye.